60 years ago, in the year 1956, my grandfather Bill Wolf Graham released New Zealand's first ever LP record, South Sea Rhythm. Somewhere nearby, the graceful and elegant teal flying boat Aranui was taking wing on the world's most romantic flight path, the Coral Route. And on the other side of the Pacific Ocean in Waikiki, US musician Martin Denny was recording his debut album Exotica, which would top the Billboard charts and define an entire genre of music. 60 years on in 2016, I've made an album called The Double Sunrise, which draws upon just a tiny fraction of the rich history and folklore of the South Seas, the influence of my grandfather's musical legacy and the evocative style of Exotica. Every record has a beginning, and the beginning of The Double Sunrise, like all of the albums I make, happened here in my home studio. It is highly possible that I spend way too much time in this room. With all the songs written and pre-production complete, I then returned to John Castle's The Shed Studios for more tracking. John is like the music-making brother I never had. We have recorded 22 albums together in the tiny studio in his parents' backyard. It was here that I first met the singer Megan Washington in the late 2000s. Her unique voice and lyrical magic feature heavily on the double sunrise. And like John, she seems to instinctively know just what is needed to make the music come to life. A lot of the major inspirations for the Double Sunrise happened 60 years ago, way before I was even alive. One of the challenges for me with this record was to bring the Exotica sound into 2016, to reintroduce it to listeners in a way that would not be too overly retro, but would capture the spirit of the kinds of records I've collected for the past two decades, from artists like Arthur Lyman, Frank Hunter and Les Baxter. Exotica as a musical style has its origins in World War II servicemen returning to the US with tales of faraway lands. It manifested as a romanticised musical vision of the South Pacific and the Orient. Island vistas and mysterious Shangri-Las reimagined in musical form with all of the imagery to go along with it. I've come to the Museum of Transport and Technology in Auckland, New Zealand to take another look at a piece of South Pacific aviation history. In the process of being lovingly restored by the volunteers of the Solent Preservation Society, ZKAMO aka Aranui is the world's last surviving short Solent 4 flying boat. Operated by Teal Airways, Aranui flew the legendary Coral Route from 1951 to 1960. Starting in Auckland and winding through Tahiti, Fiji, Samoa and the Cook Islands, this was luxury travel in the golden age of aviation. There are a lot of ghosts here for me, historically and emotionally. My parents separated when I was young and I would only get to see my father on every other weekend. On those Saturday and Sunday afternoons, this was the place he would bring me to the most. And I think that those memories of our time together in this place are a huge part of what still draws me to these aeroplanes. In 1951, Teal Airlines made a promotional film for the Coral Route and the music that provided the soundtrack was recorded by my grandfather, Bill Wolfgram. Born on the island of Vavao, Tonga in 1925, he got his musical start as a choir director. I was very lucky to be able to work with the Melbourne Samoan Choir on the song I dedicated and named after Aranui for the Double Sunrise album. The sound of a Polynesian vocal group is like nothing else in this world. While I'm in New Zealand, it's amazing to have the chance to hear a traditional Tongan choir and to imagine how these rich harmonies must have informed and shaped my grandfather's own musical voice.
After moving to New Zealand, Bill Wolfgram learned to play the steel guitar in the then immensely popular Hawaiian style. His bands would regularly play to capacity-filled venues in Auckland, including the legendary Orange Ballroom on Newton Road. Alongside friends Bill Savese, Daphne Walker, George Tumahai and others, Bill Wolfgram would become a recording star for New Zealand labels Viking and Tanza, releasing a multitude of records throughout the 50s, 60s and beyond, including New Zealand's very first album in the brand new format of the LP in 1957, South Sea Rhythm. Bill passed away in 2003. When I was small, I never got to spend too much time with him. I now obsessively collect his records, not only to preserve a major part of our own family history, but also to try to get an insight into this man, his music, and what kind of mark he left in the world. His blood runs through my veins, and though I never really knew him, his musical legacy has obviously influenced my own life's path. I want to get a sense of what Bill Wolfgram was like in those heady days when he was in his prime at the Orange Room. I've come to visit his friend and contemporary, steel guitarist Bill Savese. At 92 years old, Bill Savese is a living legend of New Zealand music. He also recorded for Tanzer and Viking, packed out the Orange Ballroom back in the day, has received awards including the Queen's Service Medal, and was recently inducted into the New Zealand Music Hall of Fame. Bill was very... He's a fine steel guitar player. He was rated number nine in the world rating. Really? Mm. I was rated <laughs> number 27. That's a big difference. So we found out by communicating by one another. Bill was very good on recordings and all that. But when he comes on, the shows and dances and all that. He said, Bill, to me, he said, you're better. You go and do it. When you, you, you guys would go and do those, cut those records for Tanza and, and Viking, would you, how did it play out? Would you just go down to the studio for a, half a day or a day and, and in the case of a, a record like this, which is, has just two songs, would, would you just go and do a couple of takes of each, or how would it work? Well, we could have been booked to go to do a recording. Bill didn't come to the rehearsal. We go down to the recording studio. You come down there, have a listen, have a listen. This thing is started playing. He's a brilliant musician. I respect him because it was so good, you know. <coughs> I have a saying that it takes time. It doesn't matter what you do, it takes time. Just for instance, when a baby is born, you learn to crawl before it can walk. Same as you guitar to play or anything. It takes time and practice. The baby will learn to walk when he learn enough to walk, you know? The birds will learn to fly when they get, get to the point. But it doesn't matter what you do, it takes time and you're gonna have patience, you know? A long time ago, someone once said that history is the version of past events that people have decided to agree upon. It seems like making the Double Sunrise album was a way for me to offer up my own small South Pacific story. A version filled with those colourful characters, majestic machines and spellbinding sounds that continue to echo down through the years. A version to throw in with the countless others from a part of the world that is quite simply like no other.